Hi everybody, I'm going to talk a little bit about projectiles, um, mainly working with type 1 in this video, but before we get going, I want to make sure that you understand the difference in the types of projectiles. When you have a type 1 projectile, the whole idea of a type 1 projectile, or at least this is how I teach it in my class, is that it only goes like half of a parabola. It might be something that rolls off of a cliff, rolls off of a tabletop, but it, it makes exactly half of a parabola and it, it falls down at the ground level. A type 2, um, it starts out at ground level, goes up in the air, and comes all the way back down to the same level that it started from. It makes an entire parabola. And a type 3 makes a whole parabola, like you can see on this one right here, that this one makes a full parabola. It may not be drawn very well by my marker, but it makes a whole parabola right here, and then it falls below the level of the, the horizontal. And so um, how we work each of these is slightly different. They all work off of the same basic idea that we'll start with type 1 and then we'll progress to type 2 and I've already got a video for type 3. So if you'll stick with me we're going to look at some type 1 problems. Um, they're all going to be type 1's because like it does here it simply starts out at the um, like somewhere up in the air and then it falls down. So here is my first problem. We've worked these in class, if you're in my physics class. It says a student sits on the roof of their house, which is 12 meters high, and then she can launch water balloons at 14 meters per second. So if we start out with this one and we draw the student's house, my first thing that I tell my students is to draw a picture. And, you know, it won't necessarily be to scale, but we're going to have the, the balloon coming off right here and going down to the, the ground level. So, it doesn't matter to me if the balloon is like really, really big for the house. Um, we're going to assume that the 12 meters high is how high in the air this, this balloon is coming down off of the roof. Okay, so this right here, we'll, we'll put in orange, is 12 meters high. And then it says she can launch water balloons from a slingshot at 14 meters per second. And she fires them directly horizontally. That means they come out of here with a horizontal speed of 14.0 meters per second. Well, it wants to know how long it'll be airborne and how far forward it will travel. So the T, I don't really have a way to label that, but as far as for the how far forward, it's wanting me to find the delta X on the X axis. Um, when we do these problems, I want you to make yourself an XY chart that will help you figure out what you know about the problem um, on the x-axis and on the y-axis. We need to be thinking about all of these as if it's on an x-y coordinate plane. And we've talked about it in class that there are three things that you can label on the x-axis. Um, how you know this is you're just going to have to stick it in your head and memorize it. You can know, you can know a, a horizontal v, a horizontal distance, and a horizontal time. On the Y, there's going to be two velocities, an initial Y velocity and a final Y velocity. You can also do the distance on the Y axis. You can find the T on the Y axis. So exactly the same things we found over here. I have to move it up a little bit. But you can also find um, the acceleration of the Y axis. So now we look at our problem and our picture and we start trying to figure out like what do we what do we know out of this? Well, anytime we're working a problem for um, something that's falling, you automatically will know the A. We will know that um, it has an acceleration due to gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, we've chosen in our class to work with positive. You may see other people work negative. Um, it really doesn't matter as long as we end up with the right sign at the end. At least it doesn't for me. I've told my students that we can work from a positive because it'll, it'll make sense in their mind that it's gaining speed. Negative would be proper, though, because it's heading in a negative direction. Another thing that you can always know about falling objects is that if she's shooting it straight out, she is giving it a, a velocity on the x of 14.0 meters per second, if I can squeeze that in there. Um, I don't know the x distance. That's actually what it's wanting me to find. And it's also asking me how long it'll be airborne. Um, on the y-axis, I know that vi is 0. 
because she doesn't give it a downward force. She doesn't throw it down. So it starts out with zero speed. What it ends up having, I don't know. Um, I do know a Y distance, which is the 12. And I don't know a Y time. One of the things about the, the projectile problems is that whatever time it takes on the X, it'll take the same time on the Y. So as we work this forward, um, it wants me to find these two things. I can't find the X over here because I can use this formula that V is equal to delta X over T, but I'm missing two of the variables. I'm missing the uh, top and the bottom of the fraction. Oops, scoot it up a little bit. I'm missing both of these, so I'm going to have to wait. In order to find the X, I need the T. So I'm going to have to find the T off of the Y side. Well, um, what I have so far is I have a VI, I have a, um, a delta X, I've got an A, I've got a T. So I've got to figure out what I could use. And if we look at the formulas that we have for this, I did some of them earlier. It's not, I can't use this one on the X because it is accelerating on the X axis. Um, I'm going to have to use one of these that has acceleration in it. And if I look at my formula choices and what I have over here, then what would make sense is that I could use, I can't use this one because delta V stands for VF minus VI. I've only got one of those two and I don't have T. That would put me back in the position of missing two variables. So if we look at this one, I don't like the fact that the T's are separated, but if my VI is zero, then what this is gonna do is it's gonna disappear. It's gonna go out of my problem and it's gonna turn this into a zero and I won't have two different T's to work with. Um, the bottom one here, it, I have enough stuff actually that I could solve it and I could find a final velocity because I've got VI, I've got the A, and I've got an X, but I would really like to find T. It's not asking me for the, for the impact speed. It's not asking me for how fast it hits the ground. If it did, then this bottom one would be my winner. So I'm going to go with the second one here. I'm going to go with this formula um, with delta X is equal to VIT plus one half AT squared. All right, uh, we already established that if zero is going in here, this is coming out of it. It's just gonna go away. Let's move my cursor here. Um, so it's gonna leave me with delta X is equal to one half AT squared. So let's start plugging stuff in. This will be 12 meters, um, one half, a we're going to use is 9.8 meters per second squared and T I don't know so it's T squared and if we do the math for this and we put everything in you're going to get a T that is equal to like 1.56 in a, in a bunch more digits um, a seconds now this is the amount of time that it takes to come from the top of the roof up here all the way down to the ground. And what we've learned, what I told you a while ago, is that if, if it's 1.6 seconds on this side, we're gonna round that with sig figs, then that means it's gonna be 1.6 seconds on the other side. So we managed to answer A right here. A is, is this, well, let's give it some better sig figs, 1.6 seconds with proper sig figs underneath there too for the 12 meters. Now, now that I have this on this side, I have V, I have T, I can now plug this in to V is equal to delta X over T. And I'm just gonna work underneath it. 14.0 meters per second is equal to something over one point. Now I tell my classes, I would prefer you plug in this whole number over here, the 1.56, you store it in your calculator and keep all of that in there you're going to come up with a delta x value of 22 with proper sig figs, 22 meters. Okay. Um, I only asked two questions in this one. You could ask for its impact velocity, like I said earlier, and you could plug that in over here into this equation in order to come up with how fast it was actually going when it hit the ground for VF. If your teacher or someone else, if you're watching, is having them do this with a negative number, like if you used a negative 
9.8 meters per second squared over here, then you would have used a negative 12 meters, indicating that it fell in a downward direction. But you're still going to end up with a positive 1.6 seconds because the two negatives will cancel each other out.